Hi there, and welcome to The Dough Show for Monday, December 3rd, 2018. I'm Ferris Fair. And I'm Bambi Dextrous, and we have another really full show for you today, so let's get right into it. Let's do it. The Stiletto Awards are coming up at Evolution Wonder Lounge on February 17th, and we thought it might be helpful if we talked about some of the videos that have come on in Edmonton in the past year to give you guys some ideas about who you may want to nominate coming up this week. In 2015, Chanelta Shanene was the winner of this award, and then in 2017, it went to Melinda Verga. And you know, Melinda would be a great fit to be nominated for this award with all of her work on Moulin Rouge, if you remember. It's true, she absolutely killed it with that. Um, someone else that I think would be deserving of this award this year is Lady Tanya Flake. Um, known for her dance moves, I love doing the one, I don't do it very well. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I definitely think that Lady Tenderflake also deserves to be nominated in this category for the show. Perfect. And another name I'll throw out there for nominations, uh, who deserves to be nominated, is Kat Marlowe Minora. <laughs> so this year she had a couple of dance classes for the queens. Mm -hmm. It was really neat and she's the only queen who's done something like that at EVO. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, yeah, yay cat. Uh, we hope they actually come back because we could both use a lesson or two. <laughs> <laughs> um, someone else that uh, totally deserves uh, this nomination is Twiggy. Um, I was a part of the EM teaser show with her and she choreographed the whole thing and uh, whenever there's any kind of a big group number as far as I'm concerned nobody does it better than the Twigster. Mm -hmm. so uh, yeah t I also think that Twiggy could definitely get a nomination in this in this category this year. Mm -hmm. Absolutely Twiggy and one that I think um, Creme Brulee. Mm. She came out this year for a Review Royale, made her debut, mm. and absolutely killed it with her chore choreographies. <laughs> 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 Hashtag choreographies. <laughs> yes, Roselle. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, uh, all five of those people, and there's more. Um, if if you think that we've missed the boat or that uh, somebody else deserves to be nominated for this category, absolutely mention it down below. Uh, we'd love to start the conversation. That's what this whole thing's about. This is in no way, shape, or form a definitive list of who should be nominated. This is just our suggestions if you haven't thought of someone that you could nominate. Four times already we have given away this award. In 2015, it went to Tierra Manila. In 2016, Tierra Masu took the title, and then in 2017 and 2018, Ruby Hyman took the title. Um, best costuming can come from a lot of different areas. Uh, mm -hmm. Someone like Ruby makes her costumes and costumes for half the people in the city. Um, and or somebody like Tierra Masu when she won, it was all about her aesthetics. Manila too. Um, it's all about the grand look. Um, and they may not have necessarily made it themselves, but they've styled it themselves. They've styled. put it together themselves. Um, so it's it's either costume maker or costume putter together. To me, it's either either mm -hmm. could, could be equally deserving of a nomination for this category. Exactly. Um, I think that one name that I would throw out there is Lilith Fair mm -hmm. because of how she can style, put together a look. Yeah. Like, obviously... She can put together a look. She definitely has a vision. And then yeah, um, vision. if she doesn't have the, the, the personal skills to do it, uh, she'll throw that coin somewhere to get somebody to make it for her. <laughs> um, and, and yeah, that's definitely a style queen. Um, somebody else that I believe is also in that same category would be Vanity Fair. Um, I don't think she makes a whole lot of her own stuff. I think she ends up getting it bought, but maybe she does make her own stuff and I just don't even know that about her. Um, but yeah, she always has a fabulous look. When she walks on stage, it is put together and it is mm -hmm. right for the song. And another name that we want to put out there is Ruby Hyman. Uh, we know she's won this category before, but she is really deserving of it. She does make her own costumes and the costumes of the other queens in the city. Mm -hmm. uh, she just pulled out a dress the other night that I saw that I absolutely loved mm -hmm. and I think was brand new. Like she just, she's amazing at what she does. Yes. Um, somebody else that's really been stepping up their game and making costumes this year is Melinda Verga. Um, mm -hmm. What she did for the glitter cup and everything else, that cheerleaders with the bomb bomb, like my god. Uh, so cool. Um, so yeah, I also think that uh, Melinda Verga could be a surprise in this category this year. And I'm also going to pick Eden. She always brings a unique look to the stage. Mm -hmm. 
Remember her Miss Art House look? Right. Amazing. Those those separating wings on the PVC pipe, like it was just yeah. so cool. Uh, yeah, fabulous. And she always turns it out, always looks amazing. Uh, so yeah, I, I agree. Anyway, those are our five suggestions. Did we get it right? Is there somebody that we missed? Comment below and get the conversation going. Because again, this is the whole point. We just want to see what the vibe is out there. We're curious as to what people are thinking for this year. This category has gone through a couple of different titles. Uh, when it first started out, it was the biggest hair, and then it slowly transitioned into the best hair. Uh, in 2015, the winner was Fifi LaRue. In 2016, it was Ruby Hyman. And then in 2017, it was Vanity Fair. Mm -hmm. They didn't have that category in 2018, I assume because no one had good hair. <laughs> 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 I hadn't finished growing mine out yet. <laughs> So for this category, I think that we should put out there Vanity Fair for her wig, for her styling. She styles wigs for other queens. Mm -hmm. um, if, if it's not on her head, the best hair in the city is often on other people's heads mm -hmm. so, uh, that she has done. So yeah, Vanity definitely deserves a nomination for this again this year. Yeah. Um, someone else that I think definitely deserves a nomination again this year is Lola L'Amour. Uh, Lola also does hair for a lot of the queens in the city and, um, yeah, uh, known for her swept up do's. Mm -hmm. Um, Lola always kills lady. it. Yes, yes, church lady. So yeah, Lola definitely could be in this category as well. Mm -hmm. Um, also could very well be in this category is Chelsea. Mm -hmm. Uh, Chelsea Horrendous. Her green hair is very iconic. But she's been rocking different mm -hmm. hair this year, and we want to recognize that. Um, and very good mm -hmm. styled wigs as mm -hmm. well. Some of the some of the do's that she's done for some of the bigger events this year have been absolutely yeah, incredible. Yeah, for some of her production shows that she's been in, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, someone else that is newer on the scene, but is quickly becoming a name to be reckoned with with hair, is Chez Les Ans La Rue. <laughs> uh, She's definitely uh, got some banging looks, and uh, a lot of people have been heading to her as the, as the year has gone on, and it's, mm -hmm. it's showing. Uh, the hair is getting better and better out there, girls. Yes. Um, also, for this category, I would put out there Duke Carson, mm. uh, and winner 2018, and, you know, just really, like, that rock star hair, like... Nobody Come works on. their hair better than Duke Carson, yeah. I will definitely say that. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I mean, uh, yeah, the hair is amazing, it's just, it's fun, it's campy, it's whatever. But yeah, nobody works their hair yeah. better than Duke totally Carson. Totally works their hair, great stage presence with their hair on stage. So that's our opinion about best hair. Did we get it right? Did we get it wrong? Let us know down below. Previous winners in this category, Tequila Mockingbird, Mel Tricks, Chelsea Horrendous and Indigo. Yay! Uh, speaking of Indigo, I totally think she is deserving of this uh, nomination again. Uh, just truly iconic, perfect face. Mm -hmm. um, truly just iconic Indigo. Yeah, Hayden rocks a look. Um, absolutely, uh, definitely a, a, a true MUA. Mm -hmm. um, Someone else that, again, I think should be deserving of a nomination in this category is Chelsea Horrendous. Again, previous winner, uh, but again, always looks so good. And I, I don't think, uh, still, even though a previous winner still gets enough credit mm -hmm. for uh, the diversity of looks that Chelsea is, is so easily accomplishes. Mm -hmm. Now for someone who hasn't won this category before, uh, someone who's new to our scene but still very, like, has an iconic face and very unique face, is Sephoria. Come on, like what a makeup artist, what mm -hmm. a makeup face. Mm -hmm. Definitely in my running for this category this year. Absolutely. Someone else that I definitely think deserves a nomination this year is Lilith Fair. Um, especially for all of her work last year on Orange is the New Pink, having to um, yeah. paint her face every single day basically for nine months. Um, she really got to know her face and I, it's really as far as I'm concerned certain come uh, a really far away in the past year. So I think she deserves a nomination for this award. Excellent. Perfect. And I would also throw out there Sushi mm -hmm. because she's definitely got a unique face and she, a unique style that she does her makeup. Mm -hmm. Like, and we, we do think, would you consider makeup in this category and 
how unique you apply it. Absolutely. And Sushi was even out uh, the other night at the bar and wasn't in drag, but like the makeup was still just like, mm. bang. Did we totally mess up and we forgot somebody that should be in this category? Comment below. In 2015, this award went to Binky. In 2016, Sister Mary Clarence took the title. In 2017, it was JBR and Rob sharing the title. And then in 2018, Vanity Fair took the title home for Best Host. And of course, Sister Mary Clarence, JBR, Vanity, and Rob could be nominated again for this category. So we're just going to throw their names out there again. Absolutely. Um, someone new that we would like to put up for this award would be Lilith Fair. Not only is she a fabulous host for drag shows and um, hosting her own events at uh, other places, but she also is the main host for the Class and Sass Productions, and oh, yeah. um, she's hosted with Scott Thompson, and like, she knows how to host. I think she deserves a nomination in this mm. category. <laughs> um, also, I'd like to put out there, Go Go Fetch. Mm for all of her work at the Yellowhead Brewery mm -hmm. brunches. Mm -hmm. um, they have been extremely popular and uh, yeah, we still haven't made it to one. We, we haven't will. made it to one. <laughs> <laughs> Promise, go, go, we'll get there. Uh, but yeah, uh, she's apparently been banging it out. Um, someone that we uh, we get to enjoy seeing host sometimes at the Dragon Youth series is Leia Way. And I wow. think she's a fabulous host and I, I Look forward to seeing her host some more in the future. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I definitely think Leia deserves a nomination in this category. Oh yeah, totally. I would also like to nominate Ivy League mm -hmm. for this category, who brings a bit of brains and wit and academics to her hosting. There's always something you can learn at an Ivy League show. It's true. It's true. It's not just a fun time. It's also an education. Uh, did we miss the boat? Did we get it all wrong? Comment below and let us know. In 2015, Lilith Fair deservedly took home the title of Funniest Drag Queen. In 2016, Lotus the Mary Virgin wrestled the title away from her, but Lilith came back in the next match to take it back in 2017. However, she lost it again the next year to another homicidal member, John Bonet Ramsby. Will someone outside of homicidal finally win this title? Let's find out together. Uh, Lilith Fair, according to the pattern, should win again this year, but we'll see. But we'll see. Um, you know, homicidal's kind of dominating in this category, so I'm going to say JBR, because yeah. when has JBR never been not funny? It's true. <laughs> Sometimes even when he doesn't mean to. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, uh, someone else that's funny, and also in Homicidal, uh, is Chelsea Horrendous. Uh, she gets a lot of attention for her shock and, and some of her other things, but bitch is funny. Some of that absurd shit that she comes up with, like Birdman, like, oh my god. Yeah. Chelsea is hilariously funny. So I think she deserves a nomination in this category, too. Yeah. Um, I would nominate Ruby Hyman mm. for this category. She does bring a lot of camp to the stage. She brings a lot of those Wendy Ho and, and Lady Bunny numbers. Absolutely. Um, somebody else that definitely brings the camp realness to the stage is Twiggy! Mm. Uh, uh, there are just some numbers that I never get sick of and I could see again and again and again. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I definitely think that Twiggy is one of the funniest performers in the city. Mm -hmm. And since this category is funniest, I mean Sister Mary Clarence. Come on. Bitch is funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, those are all totally deserving nominations. Um, did we get it right, though? Did we forget somebody? Is there somebody that should be on this list that isn't? Comment below and let us know. In 2016, the voters decided that Morgan Fair was the most improved for the year. In 2017, it was John Bonet Ramsme. And in 2018, it was Ivy League. We actually had a lot of trouble with this one. Uh, we kind of felt like everybody improved. We felt that there were so many people that had improved over the last year that we actually had a really hard time narrowing it down to five. So, um, who do you think was the most improved this year? Comment below. We're looking for like a real step up over the last year. We're curious as to who you think really deserves the nomination. 2015, Tierra Manila and Roselle Christina did a fabulous duet called 
tell him. We love it. We loved it. In 2016, Ruby Hyman and Tierra Masu did an I Will Always Love You battle. Uh, and it was so good. It was yeah. so funny. Uh, 2017, two of our favorites, Vanity and Tequila, teamed up for the Chicago finale. And in 2018, Vanity again, but this time with Lilith for Baby Jane yeah. from A Family Affair. Some absolutely classic numbers from over the last few years, and I look forward to seeing who's going to be added to the list this year. One of my really favorites of the year has to go to Chelsea, Lilith, and Kat with Archie's Weird Mysteries. Yes, the Birdman or whatever the hell it was. <laughs> it was absolutely insanity. Uh, and if not for this, it's for the what the fuck moment or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was insane. Uh, another absolutely great one was uh, Twiggy, Roselle, and Davina Die For with their version of Bang Bang. Yeah. The Velvet Cupcakes and Stud Muffins, they did uh, a number called Express during last year's uh, Behind Bars Cabaret. It was so good. So good. So good. Uh, the whole show was fabulous, but that number to that me really number, stood out. Yeah, that really stood out to us. Speaking of standing out, Secretia Menorah and Goblin Dicks teamed up this year for Pussy Riot. And it was an absolutely <laughs> phenomenal number. The two of them always turn it out when they, when they perform together, but... It was so funny. And at the Legs and Dairy show, they had Godiva, Vanity, Roselle, Twiggy, and Tequila doing She Works Hard for the Money. It was so good. So uh, good. And Christy was uh, somewhere else in the province performing that same song that night, so that yeah. was kind of extra funny. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a fabulous version that we weren't there live for, but uh, yeah, it was an incredible, incredible number. So it totally deserves a nomination. Mm -hmm. Those are what we thought for individual numbers. But we also thought for this one, we would be remiss if we didn't suggest an idea of possibly things like Moulin Rouge. Production or, shows. Yeah, Spice, uh, Quicker Kitty Cat Die Die, Little Miss Princess 1985. Or Bushes in the Basement. They're all fabulous shows. They were all group, group, all group performances. Oriented. So those could also, I feel, uh, be something that, that could be listed but we were looking at just more individual like yeah you know, the standard five to ten minute numbers kind of thing but mm -hmm. uh it, hey it's your nomination <laughs> but whatever you want so i figured we'd throw that out there too mm -hmm. do you think we got the duets right why don't you comment below and let us know in 2015, the performance of the year was Chanel de Chanene's All the Lovers, mm -hmm. and it really was a fabulous number. Uh, in 2016, Lilith turned down for what was the pick of the year. Uh, 2017, Cat Marlowe Menora, uh, Reasons to Vote for Me, uh, was a fabulous number. And in 2018, Vula Callis stepped up and took the title of performance of the year for her number, Mummy Dearest. Yay! Lilith Fair, The Joy of Painting. We love that number. Uh, speaking of fabulous number, Cat's number from the Anne semifinals, Woman. Um, taking Up Space. Taking Up Space. is definitely, it deserves a nomination for Performance of the Year. It was so powerful. Mm -hmm. So powerful. Also at Anne's, we had another favorite performance, which was Chola by Pheromone Kills. It was so good. Oh, now, we loved it so much. She actually brought it out again the other night at another event. It was just such a great number. The crowd yeah. was eating it up. So good. Mm -hmm. um, Chelsea Horrendous. I feel, as much as I don't want to feel like I'm enabling or trying to get her to do it again, Yeah. I believe that Chelsea Horrendous deserves a nomination for the stapler this year. Mm -hmm. um, the... Um, Start, Start wearing, wearing purple, purple for me now was just, it was amazing. It was amazing. I, I It was horrifying um, as someone who was sitting front row and watching the blood drip down her legs from yeah. the staples that were falling out. <laughs> it was horrifying. Um, but I mean, it was... But it is the number that everyone talks about. And I feel like that's really important in this category is yep. being iconic and being a number that everyone is talking about. Months later, people are still completely and utterly talking about it. We didn't have to think very hard to come up with that one because, again, it really was that. Shocking. It was. Um, another number that we have been talking about for a long time. It's Duke motherfucking Carson with Dude Looks Like a Lady. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, I just... 
it was it to me it was the absolutely perfect drag king number it was mm -hmm. just absolutely stellar when we saw it in calgary uh for the uh calgary semi-finals for alberta's yeah. next drag superstar and, and then, then duke came up here and performed it here at evo so so good excellent it definitely deserves a nomination for performance of the year uh yeah. Those are our five quick picks for our choices for uh, performance of the year. What do you think deserves a nomination? Please comment below. We would love to hear what you have to say. I'm going to put forward Lilith Fair for mm. this category because of her production shows, Quicker, Quicker Kitty Cat Die Die, and you know some of her more creative uh, endeavors on the stage this year. If you were lucky enough to catch bushes in the basement, you would have walked out of there going, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> Her sister and homicidal, Chelsea Horrendous, is also someone that definitely deserves to be nominated in the WTF performer. And I'm not sure whether that's what the fuck or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or I'm not really sure what that stands for. But um, I definitely think Chelsea's deservedly of it because a lot of the times when she's on stage, I'm literally cringing going, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, I agree. Um, like, they're or not? I know. Like, the, yeah. I, I, any other evidence, I put forth the stapler numbers. <laughs> what the fuck? Also to the what the fuck uh, tone, I would put Eden out. Mm -hmm. She is very out there, uh, very conceptual. We love a conceptual queen. Yes, we do. Uh, speaking of conceptual queens, we also love Lourdes the Merry Virgin, and uh, she definitely is <laughs> has had some what the fuck moments over the years. Uh, and yeah, we've seen it a few times, but like the first time I saw it, like shortcuts, it was definitely a what the fuck kind of moment is going on. Mm -hmm. And I would also put out there JBR. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we got a great comment on our channel the other day saying, um, she is sexy and she poops in a pot. Yes. Yeah, I saw that comment, actually. <laughs> so yes, what the fuck? Something that I want to suggest maybe was a what the fuck moment of the year was when dragging our heels took a bunch of drag queens to the Northwest Territories to celebrate their pride. It was an absolutely fabulous time. Do you think someone else, maybe outside of Homicidal, deserves a what the fuck nomination? Feel free to comment below. This category is one of the ones that's gone through a couple of changes throughout the years. It started off with a Best Drag Hag and Best Drag Husband Awards, um, and previous winners of that were The Fates and TJ Tim, Caitlin and George, and then Harvey Steele. It then transitioned into um, the Drag Supporter Award, and we were actually lucky enough to win in 2017. And then the next year, it was renamed the Knight and David Award for all the work that we do with Dragging Our Heels, and Ruby Hyman was the recipient of the award last year. That's right. And this year, we are putting some names out there for possible recommendations for this award. Um, I would like to put out there Anna Lynn mm -hmm. for all of her support for the Drag Queens for Dragging Our Heels. She's been a quiet supporter of Dragging Our Heels for the last little while, and, and we could not be more thankful. Yeah. Um, so I definitely think she deserves a nomination. Um, someone else that completely deserves a nomination is Shauna Forsyth. Um, mm -hmm. She's absolutely fabulous, and that girl is tireless when it comes to the amount of charity work and things that she does for the ISCWR and the Dragging Youth series. And Oh, wholeheartedly agree. I would also put out there Kyla Henry mm -hmm. because I can't think of any other person that's been to every Sunday show for the last I don't know how many months. Like she really she's has been out there every single time, front row. She's always out there supporting and she the queens. She is tipping those queens. So uh, yeah, Kyla's fabulous, and it's so great that she's definitely become a huge part of this community. Um, someone that I think that definitely deserves some recognition uh, for the amount of work that they do is is actually a team of people at Evolution Wonderland. Um, Murray and Scott and Gord and Drew and Rob have put together just an absolutely fabulous place and to me there is no bigger drag supporter in the city than that crew of Evolution Wonderland. Agreed. And I would also put out there Barb Gibbons. Mm -hmm. um, all of her work as judges and competitions and being out to events. She's very generous with her time, and like I said, she does judge events. Absolutely, and a total sweetheart, and just like loves everybody and how, and the work that they're putting forward, or for these art forms. Is there somebody else that you think deserves recognition in this category? Please comment below. We would love to hear what you think.
In 2015, Godiva was the first winner of Most Theatrical, while Bianca Lovegood took home the title of Broadway Babe. 2016, Goblin Dix took the title of Most Theatrical and reigned supreme the next year as well in 2017. We didn't actually give this one away in 2018, but what do you think is going to happen this year? I totally think that Godiva could take it away again. Like, she's a previous winner, but my god, Godiva. Absolutely. And again, Goblin is again yet another threat in this mm -hmm. category. Um, just, he isn't out all that often anymore, but uh, he was in a couple of little productions and like, it is unbelievable the, the characterizations that he put into both of those roles. So, oh, yeah. um, from, from the buck teeth to the costume to the bald head to the bitch is very theatrical. So yes. again, I would not be surprised for, for him to come back and have a three-peat. Speaking of Lilith's productions, mm. Lilith Fair for most theatrical. I mean, come on. She is a theater queen, and really, like, who's put on more theater than Lilith in the past yeah. year? Someone else that I think is absolutely fabulous uh, is, is Vula Callis, and, oh, and yeah. every number that she does is, is just beyond theater to me. She's just, mm. yeah, um, character, costuming, um, love what she brings to the stage, and I, mm. I, I definitely, she is a, a, a slice of theater in our community. For sure. And another queen that I would throw out there for theatrical would be Lady Tenderflake. Because mm. you can't think of another queen that puts more oomph into her conceptual numbers. Gives it a theater twist. It's true. Bitch is dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you think uh, somebody else deserves to be nominated as most theatrical? Please comment below. One of my favorite categories is Drag Mentor. Um, this is an extremely important category and uh, some of the more established queens in the city and the work that they are willing to put into some of us younger queens. Um, younger queens. Um, yeah, it, it cannot be understated how, how invaluable it is. Yeah. Deserved previous winners of this category were Twiggy, Vanity, and Twiggy! <laughs> and by that logic, either Twiggy or Vanity should take it this year. Really? Wow. Both yeah. of them are really deserving of it once again, of course. Absolutely. Uh, someone else that has definitely stepped up in, in uh, a drag mentor uh, type of role over the past year or so is Sister Mary Clarence. Mm. Uh, she's taken a lot of the younger queens under her wing and um, booked them in shows all over the city and just shown them some of the things that they could do. And again, Mary was someone that had been mentored by both Vanity and Twiggy, mm -hmm. so she's just carrying on the tradition. Yes. Um, another drag mentor is somebody who finally acknowledges their children, <laughs> and that is Lilith Fair. <laughs> I think she officially claimed you as her own spawn. Clone. Clone. Bad and broken clone. <laughs> for drag mentor, Lilith Fair. <laughs> no one sends me nicer nasty messages than Lilith Fair about my drag. <laughs> Mentor. <laughs> Your turn. Uh, someone that has definitely uh, shown, <clears throat> someone that has definitely spread her drag love throughout the city is Gogo -Go Fetch. She seems to be popping out a new puppy every couple of days. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just kidding, girl. Uh, but yeah, she's definitely a uh, fabulous queen and she has lots of information that she can pass on. So, uh, really, who better? Uh, mm -hmm. Love you, Gogo. -Go. Also, for this category, we're going to say Ruby Hyman. Mm. She has mentored a lot of queens mm. over the years, but this year really has mentored No Vagina yeah. quite a lot. Yeah, and Pheromone. And, and Pheromone. So, like, those, those three, like, all fostered within Ruby Hyman's mentoring. Amazing. Absolutely. Did someone else mentor you that we didn't mention? Comment below. We'd love to hear what you think. This award used to be known as nicest queen and then nicest performer, and now it is kindest performer. Past winners include Amber Coles, Bambi Dextrous, Christy Healy, and Lady Tenderflake. Somebody that I thought was going to take the title last year was Ivy League, 
And so I'm putting her name forth this year for a nomination for this category. Absolutely. Uh, and along with Ivy, I would also throw in people that had won this award before, uh, including yourself. Uh, you've never actually won this award before. <laughs> <laughs> Kindest performer. Uh, but yeah, Bambi, Christy, and Lady T, I think all deserve a nomination in this category again. Mm -hmm. uh, I would put forth Twiggy, because mm -hmm. who is really kinder than Twiggy? She puts up with a lot of crap from a lot of young queens. <laughs> She does put up with this younger, entitled queen. Yes, she does. Uh, but yeah, we absolutely love Twiggy, and, and she definitely uh, is very, very kind. Mm -hmm. uh, someone else that's new to the scene, but is very sweet and very kind, is Evelyn Knox. I definitely think that mm. um, she deserves a nomination in this category. Um, just seems like a really nice young person, and I, I quite enjoy spending time with them so far. Yeah. And someone else who's really new to the community is Sephoria. Mm -hmm. And every time I see Sephoria, every interaction is super kind, super mm -hmm. nice. So definitely deserving of this uh, nomination. Absolutely. Off stage, totally a sweet, kind thing. Some of the comments I was hearing the other night when she was hosting, I don't know, girl, about kindest performer. I was living for it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, Sephoria is fabulous, and I uh, definitely think she deserves a nomination in this category. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think someone else is kinder than who we have suggested, or just someone else that you think deserves a nomination? Please comment below. We'd love to hear what you think. In 2015, Ruby Hyman won this award, and she was so happy to win it, she decided to move here. In 2016, Electrocute won, and we decided that she should stay in Calgary. <laughs> <laughs> in 2017, Shishi LaRue was crowned favorite out-of-town guest, and we do love her as well. As a fellow Disney queen, I can think of no better person for this award than Satina Loren in Winnipeg. Yeah, Satina's great, and I always love to see Manitoba represent! <laughs> Moving slightly west, we move to Regina, where we find Flo Mingo, who comes down on a very regular basis, and we are so thankful for it. <laughs> uh, we absolutely love Flo, in and out of drag, and uh, yeah, we're so happy to have Flo come on a regular basis. I keep saying she needs to move here, but she says no, she makes too much money where she lives. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Get transferred, girl! <laughs> <laughs> From down in Calgary, we'd like to nominate Carly York-Jones. Definitely very deserving of this award and one of our favorite out of towns. From Vancouver, I couldn't even decide which one of these people that I would like to nominate. So I, to me, just need to nominate the entire group. PM, Continental Breakfast, Misty Meadows, and The Boss were absolutely fabulous when they came here last year. And, and I would love to see them out again. I, I think a Vancouver takeover of the Sunday Review oh, would be yes. absolutely killer because they were amazing. Oh, speaking of totally killer, Duke Carson yes, from Duke. Calgary. You know, he's, you know, we're a fan. We're a fan. We're a little bit of a fan. Yeah, we definitely love the Duke. So, uh, yeah, who, what better out of town performer than Duke motherfucking Carson? <laughs> Did somebody from out of town come and really impress you that we didn't mention? Put their names down below and maybe they'll get a nomination. Evolution Wonder Lounge has put on some absolutely fantastic drag events over the past five years, and this past year was absolutely no different. Previous winners of this category include Show of Shows 2, Drink, Pray, Love, Mask for Mass, and Anne's 2018. And this year we had some incredible shows. Uh, just some of the ones that we want to nominate and get out there it was Coco Peru. She was absolutely fabulous, a complete legend, and I look forward to her coming back because she put on a killer show. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of killer shows, Moulin Rouge was absolutely fabulous at the beginning of the year by the Imperial Sovereign Court and the Wild Rose. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think that would deserve a nomination for this year. Yeah, absolutely one of my favorites. Another one of our favorites was Little Miss Princess. Uh, put on by 50% Fruit Productions, Lilith's Fair. Uh, yeah, totally one of the comedy numbers we really enjoyed. Exactly. Um, and it, it'd be, we'd be remiss without including uh, Quicker Kitty Cat Die Die in there oh, as yeah, well. Both of the productions were fabulous. Uh, Miss Art House was also a completely fabulous event. Um, the past two years have been great, and, and mm -hmm. uh, it really is a one-of-a-kind night of, of amazing I have, looks. I have yet to make it up to a Miss Art House event. I'm sorry, I've just never been able to make it to one. Don't fire me. <laughs> but an event that I definitely have made it out to was the Behind Bars Cabaret. 
absolutely amazing. We loved it. Class and Sass Productions always puts on a fantastic show, and we are very much looking forward to the one that's actually coming up this weekend. Yeah. But is there another event that you think we should have mentioned? Please comment below. We're always curious as to what you think. A new category last year, Sister Mary Clarence won for Hail Mary and Have Mercy. So we definitely want to put out a mention and a nomination to Fruit Loop. Mm -hmm. uh, they put on a show every month. We've made it out to one or two in the past and mm -hmm. we enjoyed ourselves. Yeah, they're great. Something we hope to make it to soon is the Homicidal Drag Brunch at the Yellowhead Brewery. Um, I hear they're absolutely a fabulous show and everybody has a good time and uh, yeah, we definitely need to make it down to one of those. But uh, mm. from what I've heard, I definitely think it probably deserves a nomination. Yeah. And one of the shows we made it to this summer at the Fringe Festival mm -hmm. was Bushes in the Basement put on by Lilith Fair. So good. So good. Homicidal was very busy all over the city this year, including a few events at uh, the Buckingham. So, uh, mm. Homicidal at the Buck probably deserves a nomination here, too. Absolutely. Uh, also, we can't forget about Drag Bingo at 9910. Absolutely. An event put on by uh, Ruby Slippa and her uh, Ruby Gorgeous Salon, uh, mm. hosted usually by Vanity Fair and Godiva's done it, too. Um, so, yeah, definitely, again, deserving of a nomination. Uh, was there a non-Evo event that you think that should be on this list that we didn't put on this list? List it! Below! Another new category and one that I think is very important because it's definitely a huge part of what uh, the drag community does is has a social commentary on what is going on in the world around us. It is a window to what is going on in the world. One name that we want to put out there for a nomination this year is Lady Tenderflake with human. Yeah, it was definitely a social commentary piece. Um, and that's that's definitely a theme throughout a lot of her work. I actually think the entire House of Homicidal deserves a, a nomination as a group. I definitely think that uh, they very much put forth the social commentary in their in their performances. Uh, specifically, um, two of my favorites, uh, Lilith and Chelsea. Um, Lilith with some of her numbers, uh, like last year was the Dictator and Chelsea's done the NRA number and stuff like that, but they've done so many things over the years and again have continued that on this year. Mm -hmm. But I think they also both deserve a solo nomination. Yeah, for sure. We would like to nominate Christy Healy for all of her performances and performances such as Now or Never Now, um, her trans issues, her woman issues. These are social commentaries that are very relevant to these times. Absolutely. Um, someone else that has definitely uh, shown their social commentary part of their performance is Kat Marlowe Menorah. Um, specifically, I want to mention her um, taking up space number. Um, I thought it was absolutely uh, fabulous. And I mean, really, it was a social commentary on the drag community. Mm -hmm. um, it was an amazingly powerful piece. Um, and again, that's just one in particular, but she's yeah. had a lot of really powerful numbers this year. Mm -hmm. uh, we would like to mention Put In mm. with the Blood Band number. Yeah, uh, especially that one. Yes. Uh, he's definitely, again, done a lot of... Uh, he's done, yeah, he's done an NRA one, he's done the Blood one. Yeah. So, again, across the board, Put In for social commentary in this category, for absolutely, sure. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, did somebody else make some social commentary that you think was equally important this year and deserves a nomination? Please comment below. Bambi's hit and run number. <laughs> Stop killing deer on the highway. <laughs> <laughs> True story. In 2015, Loris the Merry Virgin won the title of Breakthrough Performer. 2016, Davina Die For took the title. 2017, Eden Out chomped her way through Breakthrough Performance. And 2018, our friend Lula Callis was the winner in this category. That's right. We have had so many new performers come through this year, break through, or just debut this year alone. With the amount of review reals that have come forth, let alone cherry popping, there has been a heck of a lot of new performers that have mm -hmm. broke through this year. But uh, we've narrowed down the list to five. Yeah. <laughs> um, one who has come out very recently and has already snatched some titles is Shayla Zahn. 
She has snatched some titles already with the ICWR, and if that's not a breakthrough moment, I don't know what is. Right? From the moment she stepped on stage, it was just like, damn, who that? <laughs> uh, that, that to me, is a breakthrough performance. Uh, someone else that definitely deserves a nomination in this category for this year is Sephoria. Um, she really has been doing absolutely fabulous. She's well known for her looks. She just hosted a show. She's already been picked to be in a couple of Lilith's shows. Um, yeah, she's Great definitely she's definitely being noticed, and it's it's great to see because she's a little firecracker. I quite mm -hmm. like it. Artasia, um, she is up there for being very nice and for being at at other shows. Mm -hmm. She comes out to the other people's shows, and she is a dancing queen with a Spitfire energy. Artasia would be a great nomination for Breakthrough. Absolutely, um, one of my personal favorite debuts of the year was Drag King. Smoky guy liner. He was absolutely fabulous. He absolutely rocked and the audience just ate that shit yeah. up And I really am looking forward to getting Smokey back on stage again soon. Yeah, I actually, I actually have something really, I, know. I loved that debut. Yeah, absolutely And I gotta go um, She came out she debuted at a review royale mm -hmm. and absolutely blew us away it was even a winner I believe mm -hmm. and and yes um, and, and someone who had come into the scene in the last few years um, and had been coming out to all the events and supporting the scene and it was so good to see them transition into uh, coming on stage and now it has their own shows and, and mm. everything else. So yeah, uh, congratulations to A Gotta Go. You've had a fabulous year and we think that you deserve a nomination this year. Uh, did someone else have a breakthrough year that you think deserves a nomination? Comment below. We'd love to hear what you think. One of the big categories, Performer of the Year. In 2015, Roselle Christina was the winner of this award. In 2016, Tierra Masu was the Performer of the Year. 2017, Secretia Minora strided herself on stage and captured the title. And then in 2018, Jean Benet Ramsey actually was the Performer of the Year. Always a bridesmaid, never the bride. Somebody who could be up for any one of those years is Lilith Fair. Absolutely. Uh, Lilith every year is a threat to win this award. It's just the truth of the matter. She, she consistently puts out top quality stuff. She's consistently out there putting on shows and, and uh, being in people's faces. <laughs> um, somebody else that uh, definitely has had like an amazing run over the last couple of years would be Davina Die For. Um, mm -hmm. With her reign with the ISCWR and then the year before she was the ANS winner and like really it's been a fabulous year for Davina. So yeah. uh, congratulations to her and I, I think she should deserve a nomination for this year. I mean she survived the year and that's exciting in its own. <laughs> Uh, Davina was also a princess with the mm -hmm. ISCWR, and this year's princess is none other than Sister Mary Clarence. ICP, represent! That's right, and so she always has a wonderful year. She honestly could have won any year prior to this, but we are nominating Sister Mary Clarence. Absolutely. Uh, an obvious choice for me uh, for Performer of the Year uh, this year is the current Alberta's drag superstar, Duke. Carson. He mm -hmm. always puts on a fabulous show, always turns it out. Um, an amazing performer and really, again, the, the reigning ends. So um, that in alone, as far as I'm concerned, deserves mm -hmm. a nomination. Finally took the title to Calgary. Finally took it for a king and finally took it to Calgary. Yes. That is a performer of the year. Yes. Um, and then our next person always gives a performance gives performances of the lifetime, steals our lives, and that's Vanity Fair. Absolutely, we live for Vanity every time she's on stage. So. When she, absolutely. When she's had uh, time to put in the rehearsals for doing a group number or something, she's mm -hmm. just top notch and, and any one of those performances could be, could be nominated. But really, anytime Vanity steps on the stage, it's a threat to be performance of the year. I mean, it's just the way it is. Vanity's killer. Yeah. Um, so yeah, those are our thoughts on who should be Performer of the Year this year. What do you think? Did we miss the boat? Did somebody else really slay that we just did not say? Comment below. We'd love to hear what you think. Not an official category, uh, but something that we think uh, should definitely be also be talked about is the mm -hmm. Hall of Legends. Um, 
In 2015, both Layaway and Twiggy were inducted into the hall. 2016, Vanity Fair was the latest inductee. Mm -hmm. 2017, they put in Godiva and Tequila. And in 2018, Roselle and Lilith were both put into the Hall of Legends. And in that same vein of Lilith and Roselle, um, in terms of performers who have made their mark in the Edmonton drag scene, we could definitely put up Chelsea Horrendous or mm -hmm. Sister Mary Clarence in that category. Absolutely. And someone that I definitely think uh, deserves to be there, even though they haven't been a part of the scene really as much, uh, well, really at all, um, as long as we've been around. But uh, Darren Hagen, I think, definitely deserves a nomination in any Edmonton Drag Hall of Legends, and I would love to see him nominated. And I'd love to see him out. I, I have never seen him perform, her perform. Uh, I would love to see that. The Edmonton Queen. Um, is there anybody else that you think deserves a nomination or a spot in the Hall of Legends here in Edmonton? Fairest fair right in category? <laughs> Um, yeah, if you think somebody else deserves a spot, mention it below. We'd love to hear what you think. The Stiletto Awards will be at Evolution Wonder Lounge on February 17th, and it's going to be a fantastic show. It's going to be good. Uh, who's going to win? That's up to you. You are the ones that have to get out there and nominate and vote and do all those things to make sure that your favorites are there and, and winning those top prizes. So make sure that you do that. Share your videos. Get the word out there that you think that these performances deserve the nominations. Um, do it for yourself. Do it for your friends. Whatever. Just do it. Share your videos. As we said all the way through this, we definitely do not feel that we have in any way, shape, or form um, made the definitive list for any of these categories. Uh, we completely are just getting the conversation going. Yes, so, we're um, getting an interest going. So you folks at home watching this, have your own ideas and can put those ideas when voting opens. Absolutely. Yeah. This is simply just our opinion and it's just something that, you know, we came to and as we were looking, we started thinking of even more people that we could have nominated for other things. So, mm -hmm. um, as I say, we definitely are just wanting to get some excitement out there and get the ball rolling. So comment below, share your videos, do all that wonderful stuff. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you. Bye. Bye.